What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 mini PCs of 2022. Now when it comes to this list here, these are PCs that we've personally tested on the channel. We've got a video out there. I'll leave some links in the description. And of course, there were a lot more than 10 mini PCs released in 2022, and we've done a lot more reviews than that also this year, but these are kind of my top 10 picks for the ones that I personally enjoyed using. When it comes to the list order here, we're going to start at number 10, work our way down to number 1, which is going to be my favorite mini PC of 2022. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Starting out here with the totally silent, super small form factor mini PC from Melee. This is known as the Quieter 3Q. Now in 2021 and 2022, a few of these variants were released, but this one just happens to have the Intel N5105. And for being such a small form factor PC, it actually offers some pretty decent I.O. We've got USB Type-C, full-size HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, and three USB 3.0 ports over here on the side. Now, this is far from being the most powerful mini PC on the list, but these are readily available on Amazon, and usually you can find around a $40 off coupon. And I'll tell you what, this thing actually does 4K video playback quite well. We can get some emulation out of the way and some light indie gaming. We've got the Intel Celeron N5105, built-in Intel UHD graphics, and 8GB of soldered RAM. Now, I'm not exactly sure if they're offering a 16GB model of this, but if they are, it would be available on Amazon. I've only tested the 8. And this does support an NVMe M.2 SSD. We can pull the bottom right off and slap a new one right in there. And total power consumption on this is very, very low, coming in at under 15 watts full boat. I mean, with USB plugged in and everything, you're not going to pull over 15 watts with the Mealy Quieter 3Q. Coming in at number 9 is the ASRock 4x4 Box 5800U. Now, they also offer Intel variants of this, and we can even go down to the Ryzen 5, but this is their highest end model that they offered in the Ryzen line of these boxes. Decent I.O. selection, given the form factor here. I mean, it's not going to blow anybody away. I've always liked the look of these. I mean, it's kind of plain Jane, but it is minimalistic. And this mini PC actually offered great performance the way it's set up in the BIOS, but that's all you can really get out of it, and that's why we're at number 9 with this one. The way they've got it set up, we can't go over 25 watts even using a third-party application, and the 5800U does start to strut its stuff around 28 and on up to around 42 watts. Now don't get me wrong, the ASRock engineers actually did a really decent job getting great performance out of this at the lower wattages given their power profiles that they used in the BIOS, but there's still a lot of performance left on the table that we really can't unlock. But when it comes to number 8, the B-Link SCR4, we're using the same CPU and we can totally adjust the TDP on this from the BIOS or we could use a third-party application. And if you've seen any of my reviews on these B-Link SCR machines, you know, I actually really do love the form factor here and the whole look. And I'd say over the past two years, B-Link has really turned their stuff around. They're using name brand, SSDs, and RAM in all of their mini PCs now. And overall quality control has definitely been up. And in 2022, they did release a few of these SER machines with different CPU configurations, but for this, we're actually talking about the 5800U version. 8 cores, 16 threads, Radeon Vega 8 graphics, we can go up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 MHz. This does support a single NVMe M.2 SSD, and we can add a 2.5 inch SSD in the bottom of the unit. One company that really knocked it out of the park in 2022 with these mini PCs is Menace Forum. And coming in at number 7 is their B550. I actually thought about putting this higher on the list because it is an outstanding machine, but for normal people trying to get into a mini PC, this can get a bit complicated. If you're familiar with the Menace Forum B550, you know we can actually add an external GPU to this, but it's in kind of an unconventional way when we think about these mini PCs in something like Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. This actually comes with a docking station to allow us to add a desktop GPU, but you also have to add your own power supply and obviously the graphics card itself. Now, I love the idea behind this. You know, I'm adding GPUs over M.2 slots to the tiniest PCs on the market, but a lot of people were a little frustrated with, you know, how much has to go into this to add an external GPU when you could just build a bigger system. And with this, they did offer a couple different variants. You could get the 4700G or the 5700G. With both of those, we get 8 cores, 16 threads, and built-in Vega 8 graphics. But we can also add that external desktop GPU. 
This also supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. It uses SODIMM RAM. We can add two M.2 SSDs, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, and you could install Windows or Linux on it. Now, it's a great machine, and we've got that 5700G, which is a desktop CPU, and it offers outstanding performance given the form factor we're working with here. But like I mentioned, some people did find it a bit cumbersome setting up an external GPU on this with the dock and an external power supply. Coming back around here to number six, we've got a company that kind of really made these mini PCs mainstream, and that's Intel. We've got the Nook 12 Pro. It's also known as the Nook 12 WSKI7, or even the Wall Street Canyon Nook. And there's a lot of people out there that have been overlooking these Nooks because they're not powered by Ryzen CPUs. And of course, if you want to game on the internal iGPU with these mini PCs, I would go with Ryzen. But this does offer superior Thunderbolt 4 support over some of the other Ryzen with USB 4. I've just had really good luck connecting an external GPU using a Thunderbolt dock to these Intel NUX. And this one here is powered by the i7-1260P, 12 cores, 16 threads. We've got those built-in Iris Xe graphics. It'll support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports around back for adding a ton of different accessories, including eGPUs. With this little machine here, I've tested the RTX 3060 and the 3080. This 1260p can keep up, especially at around 35 watts. And the new cooling system they're using in these NUX actually does a pretty good job at those wattages. When it comes to number five on the list, this is a very interesting mini PC. This is the ASRock DeskMeet X300. They also offer the B660, which will support Intel. This, we can add several different Ryzen CPUs. They recommend a G series from the 2000 up to the 5000, so we could go as high as the 5700G in this unit. We've got a pre-installed 500 watt power supply and it supports a dual slot ITX desktop graphics card. The setup is actually pretty neat, but you know, the highest end graphics card I've been able to test on this is the GTX 1660, given that we're kind of limited by a mini ITX card. That's really the highest end card in a mini ITX form factor that I had on hand to test with this. But we can go with the 2000 up to the 5000 65 watt G series Ryzen CPUs. It supports that ITX dual slot GPU up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. We've got one M.2 NVMe slot and it'll support two SATA 3 2.5 inch drives inside of the unit itself. We've got that pre-installed 500 watt gold power supply. And we've got a ton of I.O. on this small form factor PC. USB-C 3.2, full-size USB 3.2, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, and DisplayPort built into the motherboard. So if you did want to use an iGPU with one of those G-Series, you could. But, you know, we've got enough room here for one of those GPUs. And you can build a really stellar little machine with this. Number four on the list is one of the newest mini PCs on the market. We've got the B-Link GTR6. Now this is powered by the Ryzen 9 6900HX, and I'm not sure if they're gonna be going with the 6900H later on down the road, but we finally got Ryzen 6000 in these mini PCs. And now at the end of 2020, we're seeing all of our favorite mini PC manufacturers release these 6000 series PCs, but this is one of the first ones I tested. And this thing can definitely put the power down given that we're only working with an iGPU. Now it is based on RDNA 2 because we've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX, 8 cores, 16 threads, the brand new Radeon 680M RDNA 2 iGPU at 2400 megahertz. We can do up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz. We've got one M.2 NVMe slot and one M.2 SATA slot inside so we can add two M.2 drives in this unit. Unfortunately, with the early unit that I received, we don't have any USB 4, and I'm not exactly sure if they plan on releasing one with USB 4 later on, but it does make a lot of sense adding USB 4 to these new Ryzen PCs because even though we're on an AMD platform, we can still use an external Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 eGPU over USB 4, and we could really up the performance that this thing could put out with an external GPU. But I'll tell you what, just using the iGPU here, this thing can definitely game, and when it comes to these Ryzen 6900HX mini PCs, these do have the fastest iGPU on the market at the time of making this video. And that's going to lead us into the next one. Coming in at number three is Menace Forum's brand new Neptune series UM690. We've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX. 
and this does have USB 4. It's actually using 40 gigabit protocol, so adding an external GPU to this, all we need to do is plug in our dock directly to that USB 4 port up front, and I've always been a big fan of their Neptune series design. You can set this vertically or horizontally, but this is really packing a punch all by itself. And really, it's not recommended by Menace Forum, but from the BIOS, we can overclock that DDR5 RAM, and using the internal Radeon 680M iGPU, we can get some really great performance out of it. Literally, about 30 minutes before making this video, I just got some 5600 MHz RAM in, and I ran a few benchmarks on this with that RAM, and this is scoring higher than any other iGPU we've ever tested on the channel. I will have a video coming up soon, so stay tuned. And obviously, we've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX, Radeon 680M iGPU, USB 4, up to 64GB of DDR5 RAM, one M.2 SSD, and one 2.5-inch drive that we can actually mount right in the bottom of the unit. Now we're going to move over to my two favorite mini PCs of 2022, and I really don't want to sound biased here because they are both by Menace Forum, but if you keep up with these mini PCs, you know that Menace Forum has pumped out some amazing machines in 2022. I'm not exactly sure who they've got working in their design room and engineering team, but they've done some really great stuff this year. And coming in at number two is the Menace Forum HX90G. They hit us with this right out of the blue, and I love the design. I've always been a big fan of their HX series. They've kind of blacked this one out, but it's got a dedicated Radeon 660M GPU and a Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU. In fact, since I've done my review on this, and we also did a video testing out SteamOS, this has been my main living room gaming machine. We've got this set up with big TVs, so me and the kids can play our favorite PC games, and we can play anything we want on this. It even does a great job at 1440p if we drop some of those settings from high down to medium. We've got the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 8 core, 16 threads, a dedicated Radeon 660M GPU with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, It'll support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz. We've got two M.2 SSD slots inside. It'll run Windows and Linux. Now, like I mentioned, I did a video on the channel testing SteamOS out on this, and we can run anything we want on this machine. It's got a dual heatsink, dual fan setup to keep the GPU and the CPU side of things cool. And personally, I'm a huge fan of the look. We could always remove this stand and set it down horizontally if you want to, but I think it really sets it off, and it's got kind of an industrial look if you ask me. And finally, coming in at number one, the Menace Forum Nook X i7. Now, they also make an i5 version, but I opted to use the i7 version in this video because ever since I did my initial videos on this machine here, it's been my daily driver. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've got access to more powerful machines, more powerful GPUs, more powerful CPUs. But it's something about the form factor here and just the overall performance that I love. And this thing is actually whisper quiet, even at full boat with everything maxed out on it it's actually a really quiet little machine. Now I do wish they would have added a little more I.O. because up front we've only got three full-size USB ports and around back we've got Thunderbolt 4. So if you need a bunch of accessories plugged in at the same time, you might need to use a dock. I mean, but this could get a lot of people by. It just would have been nice to have two more full-size USBs on the rear of this unit. But when it comes to the specs, we've got an Intel i7 11800H, 8 cores, 16 threads, with a max clock up to 4.6 gigahertz, offers great single and multi-core performance. We've also got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And by the way, this is a laptop variant of the 3070, so it's not going to match a desktop 3070. But with the cooling system they have in place here, I mean, we can run this at the max clocks on the CPU and the GPU all day. And again, I can't stress this enough. I mean, this thing stays whisper quiet even at full load on the GPU and CPU at the same time. It's actually a really awesome machine. And given the form factor, specs, and performance that this puts out, that's really why it's number one on my list. This is really one of my favorite mini PCs that I've ever been able to test on the channel. So those were my top 10 picks for the best mini PCs of 2022, and of course there were more mini PCs released this year, and some of them did come in with a lot more power. Like Zotac actually released a few, uh, very expensive, but they had up to an RTX 
3080, which is absolutely insane, but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to review that. So I kind of kept it with stuff that I knew was working, stuff that we've reviewed on the channel, and these are my picks. Let me know what your favorite mini PC of 2022 was in the comments below. And if you're interested in any of these, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.